great, I'm sorry, uh, 165. Uh, great opportunity to to win um, in a tough match, and I think that's that made the difference in the duel. Um, uh, they were able to win those matches, and I think that's uh, the area that we're going to have to get better in. Um, really being the first to attack um, when that situation hits. Um, I'm really proud of a few guys that really, or all the guys, but I'm proud of a few guys that, that really laid it on the line. Colson DeBlasi, um, he went out there against the number fourth ranked kid in the country and, and challenged that kid's heart and, um, uh, and that kid's toughness. And he was one point from winning the stall all the way from winning and um, or going into overtime. Uh, and I thought that was a, a real positive. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the things that we learned from this weekend, uh, the positives, and uh, move into the new year, starting with Midlands, uh, then move into the new year uh, with great expectations of our guys to really uh, make the connection necessary to, to finish off the season really, really strong. So um, we should have Pat back from Midlands. Uh, I chose not to wrestle Pat in the Iowa duel uh, just solely based on, on health. Um, I didn't think uh, uh, a win uh, in that duel uh, for him was going to be worth uh, taking the chance of him being uh, injured for the rest of the season or possibly uh, um, even at Midlands or, or our next duel after after Midlands. So that's the reason I didn't wrestle, wrestle uh, Pat. Uh, what was your reaction to Pat's Twitter um, after the well, I think I've said it on several occasions that if, if, you, if you're following the Pat, stop following him. He, um, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a tough follow, but Pat really wears his emotions on his sleeve. Um, I think for us and his growth and maturity, I think he has toned down uh, some of the things, but he's an emotional kid and, 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 and I told him that, you know, when you're as socially active as you are, there's going to be people that are going to call you out on, on your social activities um, uh, on, on, on Twitter and, and uh, sn uh, Snapchat or whatever it is, uh, Instagram, all of that stuff, they're going to call you out on that. And so um, he was getting heckled pretty good um, down there on the on the sidelines and um, you know if you know Pat um, he's from Baltimore he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't take too much it's, it's not too hard to get him riled up and get him to do something that probably not in his best interest so um, so we had to we had to control him a little bit on the sideline and get him in the back to relax because uh, he wanted to compete he, uh, in that environment he thrives in uh, a gladiator environment and I thought that was the perfect environment for him and so it was my decision not to not to wrestle him, and so um, hopefully he's he's back off of Twitter a little bit. Hopefully. How did Colton kind of uh, respond to getting that close against someone that good? Um, what was his kind of reaction? To well, that? I think he just realizes he's getting better and better, and he's getting closer and closer to um, wrestling the way he needs to wrestle to be an All-American. You know, that kid's ranked fourth in the country. Um, and he made a huge mistake um, giving up a four-point move. But I think if we don't give up that four-point move, we're right in that match to, to probably win it and dominate it the way uh, he was riding him and, and, and as tired as uh, his opponent uh, looked and, and fatigued as, as his opponent looked. So his response has been good. I think every step of the way, um, I've been really happy with his growth um, and with his, um, uh, 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 his connection to the things that we want to see him do better. So. He's continuing to grow. That has to continue to happen for him to be able to be at his best. I think sometimes his history of, of things working um, makes him wrestle, um, you know, uh, you know, kind of carefree. And, and, and you can't always do that against the very best guys because that, that will cost you, you know, the four-point moves or takedowns or you know, not allow you to get off get off the bottom the right way. But he he's he's making the right connections and he's he's. Um, He's been really, really good about seeing the um, uh, the growth and uh, in his in his his abilities. Did you get the response out of Earl that you're kind of looking for? Has he taken that step forward after last week's kind of calling out here Monday? Um, I, 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 you know, I I'd have to say no. I mean, I'd have to say that um, he's better than that. I mean, we we got a backup guy um, that we're wrestling against. And we score an easy early takedown, and then I, I don't know if we scored another takedown. I forget what the score. Did he score another takedown? He, he had two takedowns. He had two imagine. takedowns. Um, and I think both takedowns were relatively easy. In the first period, uh, yeah. Relatively easy takedowns. So you get two takedowns in the first, and you don't get another takedown the rest of the match. And in back of my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and thinking, thinking bonus. And I think 
he knew that we were hoping and thinking bonus. So, um, um, you know, we addressed it again after the duel that, you know, he, he says he's thinking a little bit too much out there and he's worrying a little bit too much out there. And, and you know, he should be at a point in his career where he just goes out there and lets it fly and the results speak for themselves. So, we, no, we didn't, we didn't get the result. Or the or the effort out of him that we that that we would hope to see. Uh, you guys are heading to Midlands. Um, how much could that whole tournament help Earl progress and get to that more attacking style you want to have? Well, it, it, it will if he'll if he'll do it. I mean, if he'll if he'll go out there and wrestle like he did a couple years ago at the scuffle um, and just go out there. And it's not even about it's just competing to your potential, competing to your your true ability. And that's all we're, we're not asking him to do anything extraordinary. We're just asking him to go out there and, and compete to your ability. Just wrestle to your, to, to, to your ability to show yourself how good you are. And, and, you know, we always tell him that you don't know anybody but yourself. You owe you um, to go out there and, and battle and, and, and prove it to yourself how good you are. And so I'm hoping he makes that connection. I'm, we're hoping that as you get through finals the right way, um, and that's that's big right now. We got to get them through finals at the same time, trying to add another level level of training um, on them um, this week. Uh, but we're hoping um, you know we can get him uh, to go out the Midlands and without the pressure of school, um, having to do any homework or study or any of those things, and, and, and let it go. I think it will go a long ways to his end result if he does that. Yeah, switching gears a little bit. Keon had a really impressive uh, Cliff Keen before he got injured, and then he pretty much dominated uh, Holloway from Iowa. What are you seeing out of Keon right now? <clears throat> well, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that Keon's competing like a heavyweight, you know, that he's actually using his size and his strength and his athleticism to win matches. I think he would have placed a little bit higher in Cliff Keen if, if we wouldn't have pulled him. Um, you know, I think the disappointing loss at Wyoming has motivated him to, to show that that, that wasn't uh, what he's all about, that he's that he's better than, you know, that showed. Um, but I'm happy with where Keon's mind is, where he's at mentally right now. I'm happy that he's scoring points early and scoring points late and that he's using that big body like it's supposed to be used and that um, he believes uh, that he can, he can beat a lot of people. And if he continues to wrestle this way, and, and I think if we can still, again, get him about 10 pounds leaner, um, I think he's going to believe in his condition a little bit more and you'll see a little bit more out of him. So um, we want to take him in the Midlands. He wasn't all the way healthy. He didn't wrestle. He didn't uh, train at all on the mat as far as live wrestling this week. We just tried to rehab him and get him good enough to go out there and, and wrestle this match. And so um, we didn't have too much of a setback uh, after the duel. So um, we're hoping we get a couple more days of recovery under his belt and we can get him back to 100% for Midlands because that's going to be a, a challenge for him and, and really tell us where he's at. You said 10 pounds leaner. What's he walking around at right now? I mean, I don't know. I mean, heavy. He's walking around <laughs> heavy. That's what he's walking around at. He's walking around heavy. But, um, but he's making the weight pretty comfortably. He's making it pretty easy. But I, I just, you know, heavyweights having to lose weight to get to weight, it's, it's a, you know, it's something I've, I've, I've had to get used to. You know, I've, had, I've never had a heavyweight. I, you know, I came with Zimbrisky was here. You know, Zimbrisky was 220 pounds or so. Having to worry about a heavyweight, ask a heavyweight how much he weighed before weigh-ins was never uh, something that we used to do. Um, but we've had to deal with Keon. He's probably you know, 295.